Hi, it's Chris Watkin back with Steph Walker. Now, Steph used to be uh, head of the contact centre for Purple Bricks and then went over to America to be head of recruitment. The question I want to ask you, Steph, is this. Were Purple Bricks to blame for the low fees in a state agency at the moment? Talk to me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, if you read the comment section of Property Industry I, you would believe. I mean, Michael and Kenny went round to every consumer in the UK and brought fees down themselves single-handedly. The answer is absolutely not. Um, and trust me, as somebody that started, I was one of the original territory owners for Pebble Bricks, launched Pebble Bricks into Merseyside. Um, it was never about fee because some of my competitors were always way cheaper than me, and already way cheaper than me, sorry. Um, and I remember quite distinctly being called out to evaluation on St. Michael's Church Road in South Liverpool, one of the best roads for sort of a first time buyer starter home. It's next to this gorgeous little hamlet, everybody wants to live. It's fantastic. I remember the valuation being booked in and going, I've got to win this. This is this is going to start PB Merseyside 100%. And I went out against um, Countrywide, the previous brand I worked for. I went out for against the, the brand I'd worked for just before, which was an independent. And I went out against the probably leading agent in South Liverpool, um, who are a brilliant agency by all respects in terms of uh, their very um, tough tactics. It's very um, sort of slick hair, shiny suit type agency. Um, now, fee was never a question for this person, and this can actually be looked up on the Trust Pilot Review that still exists to this day, in my name, from David Price. Um, but David said he called out the traditional high street, he called out, oh, well, actually, he also had out, I think it must have been, uh, maybe it was uh, House Simple, whatever incantation of that was happening at the time, a true online, and then what he believed was somewhere in the middle, a, a purple bricks type scenario. Um, it was never about the fee for him, um, but the high street agent dropped their pants to try and win the listing from me because it was St. Michael's Church Road. They offered to sell that property that was 180,000 for 400 pounds plus that. The leading agent was happy to take a listing for 400 pounds plus that. What's the point? And it just goes to show that the, it's the mentality of things that, that, that are wrong. Um, you know, we were uh, talking outside with Matt Giggs a little earlier and when we get down to the crux of it, if you look at the independent agents five, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago, the game started to change. Uh, things were becoming more expensive. There were more things that you had to pay for, but also things like right move then starts to put you on an even keel, right? So you're either all on right move, you're not on right move, whatever it might be. As those costs increase and you start to feel uh, that coming through into your business, you feel then that you have to start chasing that numbers game, I believe. And to do that, you will then start taking listings at any cost. But you kind of have to, right? Because you're thinking about those bills that, that you need to pay. You've then got the, the countrywide of the world where you can have two, sometimes or even three, uh, competitive countrywide brands within the same town or area, all offering the same damn thing. The only thing you can compete on then is fee. Because what is the difference? Because you are simply the same business, just with a different logo outside the front door. So again, this structure of leaning towards what eventually became a volume business um, has, for me, reduced uh, th those, those fees. But also, you know, let's not forget Rightmove. What's happened since Rightmove's come to, to, to the foray is that the clients have stopped believing that actually what we do is a really, really important job because they believe the market moves on right move. They go to right move. There's either a house there or it isn't. And then that agent is either helpful in that journey or unhelpful. So do you think the issue is that we're not proving our fee? Yeah, 100%. Let's come back to the original question. Yeah. So are you saying that Purple Bricks are not the fault? They were just... Purple Bricks for me, is it's a different kettle of fish, right? Purple Bricks came about because it needed to. There were a certain group of people in the UK that don't believe in the value of the agent and are therefore never going to pay any of those fees. They will just run around town until somebody 
get to the price that they see fit. So Purple Bricks addresses a different market to what the rest of the Is that why you think Purple Bricks have never grown above 4 yeah. or 5%? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. 100%. And, and that's the problem, right? Because conventional agents suddenly had the get-out-of-jail-free card because they can stop blaming themselves and they can blame Purple Bricks instead. And do you think that was the issue? 100%. Now, I will just say for the camera, um, if you actually take the time and trouble to look at the home buying survey by the Property Academy through either the Sunday Times or now the Best Estate Agent Guide, and look back for every single year since 2006, you will see that the fee was 1.6 back in 2006, and at the moment it's 1. And if you track that every single year, it has been going down. Purple Bricks only came around in 2014. And it didn't make an incremental it difference? It made no difference whatsoever. And it's interesting you say, and there's going to be a lot of people on this that don't agree with you, that in fact, do you, you, you think that people have used purple bricks as a get out of jail card to blame? Yeah, 100%. And really, they should be looking at themselves in the mirror. It's, well, it's something that we do in life, right? Um, and I find this so funny. If you can't be held accountable, uh, if you can't hold yourself accountable, it's much easier, right? And so when you're an independent business owner or you're a branch manager in a conventional agency, you don't actually have to engage with the community at large, right? You don't have to speak to the Purple Bricks local estate agent in your area. You don't have to speak to this person, that person. So you can sit back and go, I'm doing a very brilliant job. It must be them. Rather than going, okay, why does that customer choose to use a Purple Bricks? And is actually that the kind of customer that I'd want anyway? Is that my target customer? No, but again, the conventional mindset of chasing after pure numbers makes me believe I have to do business with everybody. And again, we don't. So how do agents change their mindset so they do think not necessarily on the numbers, but actually on the relationships and getting the customers that they actually really want to do business with? Well, I think it'd be interesting to get a group of agents together and go, talk to me about your ideal customer. And I reckon that a lot of them would be like, it's a stupid question like anyone, like somebody that lives in XYZ town and that's such the wrong answer. Now, and again, I will put my own disclaimer on, am I saying that this is true of every single conventional estate agent in the country? Absolutely not. I still have, I have a family member that runs a high street agency. So just disclaimer, and I probably will get lots of stick from him after this interview. But, you know, do you know who your customer is? Who is your customer? Who is the customer that you really like doing business with? One of my new business partner agents that started um, just this past month, he said to me the other day, I've not got as many listings as everybody else, but I've got the right listings. I want to be known in my town for the three, four bed detached. They're around 450, 500. That's me. That is my little business. That's the one that I want. And I actually only need one of those listings a month over the year um, to make really, really, really good money. I think, do you think we're, we're very guilty of looking for the validation of the market share that everyone loves us in reality? We should actually be thinking And I used to, I used to. Oh my, I used to print out my lovely little... Right move pie chart. I love, used to love it. I used to love it. And then there was Vizzy Homes back in the day where you could actually publish them on your leaflets. Oh, Remember Vizzy Homes? Vizzy Homes, I have not. Wow, I've not heard that. <laughs> That's a flashback, isn't wow. it? Wow. Loved Vizzy Homes. They? Where are they? <laughs> Shit, I forgot about them. <laughs> yeah. And you, we used to do our marketing leaflets. I used to have a half window with my Vizzy Homes chart, oh. stick it on. Oh, I, I used to walk. And it was brilliant because my old countrywide branch was across the road mm. from the new independent. And I'd be like, hey, have you seen my pie chart? It's fantastic. Um, but it, it, it's, it's just a fallacy, isn't it, really? Ego and validation. Absolutely. I know a lot of people will disagree with me and, and, and Steph, but there you go, we're all intact to our opinion. And, 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 you know, I think, let's think, it, it certainly was before review culture was so big as well, I, I, I do believe. Um, so now you get your validation from your amazing review, right? But then it's about thinking, let's read those reviews what are the main things that people are loving about our service? Right, okay, how do we develop them? How are we able to push those points? Um, and that's the crux of making a new business plan, right? Um, what's the thing that no, nobody's ever mentioned? And there'll be a few lists of those, mm -hmm. uh, probably all the things that we b believe we like as agents. But read those reviews. What are the main things that are concentrated on? Could there be ways that you just tweak your mm -hmm. systems and processes to lead towards that uh, part of the, the the process i hate calling it a process but you know and i think we're just short-sighted we're chasing that right move pie chart i'd much prefer to sell 
five houses at 1.5% a month and continuously be able to do that. And then all those five people go and tell another five people each mm -hmm. of the same ilk, right? The same kind of customer that is gonna love and appreciate this service. Um, I, I, and I'm gonna really get on with and enjoy. Um, because, you know, I'm sure we've all got our favorite customers. David Price, who I mentioned before, one of my favorite customers. I also had Mr. and Mrs. Bentley from a bungalow in Formby, favorite customers forever, ever, ever. I'll remember them for always. Um, I'd, do bit, I, I'd sell one of their houses every single day if I could. I wouldn't, I'd be far too busy, but you get what I mean. Thank you for your time today, Steph. I told you I can just waffle right on, can't I? <laughs> if you get me excited about something though, I just can't shut up. This is uh, how I used to win listings. People had just signed to get me out of the house.